There were many people who called the desert their home. They had many names. Ute. Nemo. Navajo. Hopi. But the people who were here before these were called the Anasazi, the ancient ones. These are examples of their rock art. The Anasazi were living in the desert as long ago as 2,000 years. Why they chose to live here, we'll probably never know. For while they left behind their pictures, they did not have a written language. Perhaps they were a peaceful people and found safety in the desert, away from other hostile tribes. Early homes of the Anasazi were simple. Some were made of stone slabs stacked one on top of another. Later in their development, the homes became larger. Family joined family, creating communities. The style of their stonework changed from generation to generation. And they now used clay to keep the stones together. Logs were used to support upper stories. And the Anasazi began to build their homes two and even three stories high. After a thousand years of steady development, the Anasazi built their largest and finest dwellings, La Pueblo Bonito. It once stood five stories high and may have housed as many as a thousand people. Then, about 800 years ago, the Anasazi began to do something unusual. They began to build their homes high into canyon walls. The ruins of these cliff dwellings can be found throughout the southwest. This region is dry and rugged. There is little vegetation. How was it that people could live here? What were their lives like? While we have been hunting, my mother has been back at our village, preparing for our dinner. First, she starts a fire by spinning a stake on a piece of wood. The spinning causes the wood to heat up. Shiva, my little sister, watches very carefully. In a few years, she will have to know how to start a fire herself. Soon, the wood gets hot enough to make dry grass smolder. My mother then blows on this until flames appear. At just the right moment, she takes a dry yucca leaf to pass the flame to some twigs and sticks. She adds to this until there is a real fire. Corn is eaten at practically every meal. We grow it ourselves. The kernels first must be ground. They are then formed into patties. Even Shiva helps out by making a patty or two. This is what they look like after they've been cooked on a hot rock. Cornbread with a little bit of honey that tastes very good. We grow several different types of corn, beans, and other crops as well. And we also pick wild grain, nuts, and berries. We eat two meals each day, and we always eat outdoors, unless it is raining. We're very hungry, as it has been a long time since we had our first meal. The next day is one of great excitement. What's up, Chucky? What's up? My father and my uncle have been chosen by our clan to travel far to the south to trade with people of another tribe. For the first time, my father has agreed to take me with him, even though our journey might be dangerous. We will see places I have only heard about. The great stone bridge. The woman of stone and her bashful daughter. And balancing rock. This will be a great adventure. While we are gone, my mother and sister will have plenty to do. This will be a good time for them to make some new pottery from clay found in our area. My mother begins by working clay with her hands, making sure there are no air bubbles inside. Next, she places a piece in the bottom of a bowl and spreads it out evenly. When the inside of the bowl is covered, my mother places a coil around the edge and smooths this out. She keeps adding coils and smoothing until the pot reaches the desired shape. After drying in the sun, the pot changes to a lighter color and it is placed in the fire where it is covered with another pot. Wood is stacked around this. After several hours in the fire, the pot becomes very hard and waterproof. After firing, the pot is decorated. 
Practically all of our pottery is painted the same color, black on white. Another job that always needs being done is sewing. My mother is adding a rabbit fur to a blanket. As always, Shiva is right by her side. The needle my mother uses is carved from the bone of a deer, another animal we hunt in our area. We use rabbit furs for our blankets, robes, and clothing. We also use deer skin, but rabbit fur is much softer, and it is Shiva's favorite. My father and I have come to the place where we meet the traders from the other tribe. My father has met them before, and they have become friends. One of the traders, Loho, has brought a strange green bird. It is said to come from a faraway land. The bird is very friendly and quite smart. With just a little help from Loho, it will lie on its back and roll over. <laughs> the traders have other things I've never seen. A beautiful shell that comes from a great body of water far to the west. And red coral, which can be made into beautiful jewelry. My father examines a large block of black glass. It is found only in special areas. Many excellent tools can be made from a piece this large. My father wants to trade deer antlers he has brought for the black glass, but Loho doesn't seem interested. He says the glass is worth much more than the antlers. My father doesn't agree, and the two bigger back and forth. Until finally, Loho gives in. It had been two days since we left the traders, and we were passing through the land with the hostiles, a fierce, war-loving people. We hoped we wouldn't see any. My uncle dropped his back, hoping this would slow the hostiles down. It did. But not for long. We hid in the cave for most of the day. Finally, when we thought it was safe, we left. During the chase, we lost some of the things we had traded for. Our people will not be too disappointed, for they will be happy we have returned with their lives. Akina, his father, and his uncle made it back safely, but the days of the cliff dwellers were coming to an end. No one is sure why, but the Anasazi abandoned their dwellings around the year 1300. It is believed the people settled in other parts of the southwest, where they became known as Pueblo Indians. Here, they built adobe villages along rivers and farmed the land. They lived in peace for hundreds of years, until a new people, the Europeans, entered the country.